Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. And this is part four of our automation series where we're looking at how we can use the various modules, MIDI QOL and the what's known as the MIDIverse. So the MIDI QOL mod and the other mods that all support that. Just so you know, if you haven't heard that term before, referred to as the MIDIverse. Um, how we can use those to automate certain things in our game. And in this video, we're looking at concentration. But before we look at concentration, we've got a little issue we might need to fix. So we're going to look at the spell True Strike, which is very simple. Hardly anybody uses it because it's, it's not the best cantrip out there. There's certainly better ones. Um, but it is a one round concentration effect. So for our purposes for testing concentration, it works perfectly. Now, rules as written, um, when you cast True Strike, you choose a particular target you're casting it on. Then on your until your next turn, sorry, on your next turn, you gain advantage against that particular target. Okay, so not just on your next attack only on your next attack or your next turn against that particular target. So if Soryman's casting that, let's stick them into combat first. Okay, so I'm going to roll initiative and look how quick that is because we've got our dice automation on. Boom, done. Um, so we're into combat now. Let's start that. Soryman gets to go first. He's going to cast a true strike. So he's casting it. We would expect him to then have to concentrate on this spell and we would expect it to affect the goblin. So when we cast this spell, it, it does indeed give us a concentration um, thing, and we can cast it. And there we go. So this looks good, doesn't it? Soryman's got this little icon in his top left corner showing that he's concentrating on a spell, and the goblin's got this little icon in the top right corner uh, saying that he now has um, he he now is the target of a true strike. However, that's not what it's actually doing. That's not how it's working. What it's done is it said, Oh, Goblin, you now have True Strike, which means you get advantage on your next attack. <laughs> we don't want that. And Soryman doesn't get it. Uh, he doesn't get that extra um, advantage that he should have on his turn. So, again, we will get to fixing these things in a in a bigger wider way when we get to um, a little bit further down the road but i do want to show you the a little fix for those kind of things so in true strike if i go to edit this what we can see is we've got the sorry on we've got the description which tells us what it's supposed to do we've got some details here that we don't need to fiddle with we've got the effects we've also got this midi qol button now so that's going to appear on all of our items that is going to help us automate stuff. So you can see it's got things like confirming targets. So yes, we're going to use our MIDI settings for confirming targets, but we can change that if we want to. Separate attack per target. Use our standard MIDI settings, but we can override them. We can also tell it to use a particular item macro that we want it to do in a, a particular time. So there's things we can do and we will look at that in a lot more detail. But in this instance, if I go back to the effects, the effect it's going to give is True Strike. So if I edit this, uh, now this is all, should point out, if you notice just at the top of this window, DAE is up here. Okay, so that's the dynamic active effects part. Okay, that's one of the modules that comes with MIDI QOL. That is driving a lot of this behavior in the background regardless of our MIDI settings. So if I edit this, it gives us uh, an expanded list on these details where we've got details, we've got duration, so we can, if we wanted to, we know True Strike is supposed to be only lasts one round until the next round. But you can change it if you want to, if you particularly want to. Uh, and this is the bit that um, DAE is doing for us. Can you see? It is setting flags, MIDI QOL, advantage on all attacks. Um, and it's overriding what any ability you've got. So that's the effect it's actually going to give to the recipient of the spell. Now, unfortunately, the recipient of the spell in this case has been the goblin because it's what was targeted so the goblin is getting advantage on all attacks. So Soryman is now 
concentrating on a spell to give the enemy advantage on their attacks. <laughs> Clearly not quite right. So if we go back to the detail screen here, you can see there's a whole bunch of different options. Again, we will go through this in a lot more detail further on. But some of the things we can do uh, are about when this effect actually takes place. So just having the item, does it apply the effect? What we want is apply to self when the item applies target effects. And it just says underneath, effect is applied to the user of the item, not the target of the item. So I want to click that because I want Sorryman, when he casts it, regardless of what's targeted, I want Sorryman to get the advantage. So this is a this is the way of just kind of fixing that. Now I'm going to end his concentration here by just going break concentration and you can see that Sorryman no longer is concentrating and the goblin has no longer got that effect. Okay, so let's do that again if I can get the right thing. So same as we were, I've got Sorryman selected who's going to cast it and the goblin is targeted. I cast True Strike. It's going to ask me about concentrating and now Sorryman has that advantage effect and he is concentrating on it. Brilliant, that's what we want. And just so you know, regardless of, um, you know, if you're not using something like the Carousel Combat Tracker, in the standard tracker it will show you very small little icons next to that person as well to show them what effects are on them. So it does replicate that. Okay, so in theory, on Sorryman's next go, he is going to have advantage. So uh, he's had his turn. Let's move to the Goblin. The Goblin is going to be attacking Sorryman. I'm going to clear that chat just so it keeps it nice and tidy. You can see what's happening for each one. Because remember, we've got the fast forward the rolls on. So it's going to go quickly. It's going to go bosh. And we failed to hit. Okay, fine. Now it's Sorryman's go. Now Sorryman should... Yes, I know his icon just disappeared. Sorryman should now get advantage when he makes this attack. He's going to do just a quarter staff attack, one-handed, and he hit. So looking at the card over here, just above this 15 confirmation that he hit, you might be able to see very small. It says 2d20kh plus 3 plus 3. So what that's doing is it's saying I'm rolling 2d20. The kh is keep highest. That's the advantage roll. I'm rolling 1d20 twice and I'm keeping the highest one of those. Then I'm adding 3 to it. Then I'm adding 3 to it. It's exactly what we would want to see. So that advantage roll is already happening regardless of any um, changes to MIDI. Okay, Because I've not made any changes to the MIDI settings apart from what you have seen with the saving throws and the and fast forwarding the attack rolls. So this is core foundry working with concentration at this point. So well done, you've given that goblin a spanking. Now what should happen of course is Sorryman that should only last if we gain just looking at true strike until your next turn. So at the end of his turn that should go. He should no longer be concentrating on that spell. It only lasts one turn. So that's not working how we'd want to. I'd have to manually go in as the DM and go, oh, right, break that concentration or ask the player to do it. So that part's not automated. Okay, so yes, putting concentration on when we cast the spell automatically does that for us. Lovely jubbly. Um, it's automatically, that spell is automatically pieing the advantage, albeit initially on the wrong person, um, but that has worked, but it's not taking it off. So we're going to look at that. The next thing we're going to look at is now the goblin's turn. And I'm going go, to go a bit mental on uh, with my attacks on Sorryman until we hit him, because uh, this goblin might not hit him very readily. Right, there we go. Boom. So the goblin has managed to hit him with a 15. Uh, has done damage. Sorryman's concentrating. Where's his saving throw to maintain concentration on that spell? We know he shouldn't have it anyway, but he has. So there is no concentration saving throw as part of the core game. So we've got two problems. Concentration doesn't automatically end when the spell effect ends. So here we can see True Strike is concentrating on True Strike. But there's no timer countdown. He's not. It's not disappeared when it should have done. 
and when he takes damage it's not forcing him to make a concentration roll. Alright, so let's clear that. I'm going to end this combat. I'm going to heal up my, my little dude here. My poor little test guy. <laughs> this one goblin just gets a massive kicking every video. Okay, so uh, we remove all of that. So we've moved, we're back to where we were. Uh, I'm going to clear my chat and then let's go look at the MIDI settings here. So again, up to the cog, configure settings into MIDI, and I want to look in the workflow. So uh, let's move that out the way a bit so it's not, you're not getting confused which window is which. And I want to look at this concentration tab here. Now in here, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Force a concentration save when damage taken. Well, that's exactly what one of our problems is. It's not doing that. And I can get it to do a chat message, a chat message and an auto, auto roll, or just a roll uh, for the concentration item. Let's do the chat and the auto roll in there. Let's pop that in. And it does say here what these do. Own, um, only display a chat message um, uh, with a button. Uh, display a chat message and auto roll the save. Uh, a roll a concentration item check. So the MIDI standard behavior. So perhaps we ought to go with the roll concentration item a check because that's the standard MIDI behavior. That's the one that um, Tim Posney, who, who is the, the core um, MIDI QOL dude, uh, that's what he's got here. Now do be aware though, some of these things, notice this middle one, chat message and auto roll, display a chat message and auto roll the save, requires D&D 5e concentration. So you might find that you need to go to the settings on another area and ensure that you've got those settings on. Um, so in the D&D 5e one, wherever, wherever that is, not going to bother looking at that. That's not what we're here for. Um, so you do need to be just aware that, that not everything necessarily is uh, automatically there. You need to make sure your settings work with other things. Right, so let's move on. So we're going to have roll concentration item. Brilliant. Do we want to remove the concentration if we fail the save? Well, that's a no-brainer. That's the whole point of making the roll, isn't it? Yeah? So we're going to put that on. But, but, but bearing in mind, that's a choice. And that's what I really like about MIDI is you might have a reason to not have that choice. Oh, you failed to save. Maybe you have something else happen. Not just failing concentration or rather losing concentration. You might have a different mechanic you want. So you, you can optionize that. Remove the concentration when incapacitating status applied. So let's say Soriman's on one hit point. The goblin hits him. He makes his saving throw to maintain concentration. But the damage he takes puts him unconscious. And he's incapacitated. Well, he's going to lose concentration. So I definitely want that on. Single concentration check. So this is if you are receiving multiple types of damage with the same attack. So let's say a flaming sword, you're taking slashing damage and you're taking fire damage, what this is asking is basically saying, well, should we add all of the damage together and say, look, it's one big hit, should we be making a check based on that? And the answer is yes. For me, might not be for you. What about temporary hit point concentration check? So if Saruman's got temporary hit points, let's say he's got four, the goblin hits him for three damage, that's only coming off of his temporary hit points. So should he roll a concentration check? Now that's going to depend how you visualize those additional hit points working. If you see them as just physically bolstering their health, well they've still been hit by a sword or a hammer or whatever it might be. So it's just, they're still being physically attacked and battered around. So yeah, they need to make concentration. But you might see it as actually temporary hit points are more of a kind of a, a myth, mythical protection type of shield sort of deal. And you say, well, no, because it hasn't. The fact that they were hit with that giant massive tree club, it didn't actually physically touch them because it was absorbed by the temporary hit points shield kind of effect. So you might say, no, I don't want that. I do. <laughs> I don't care how many temporary hit points you get. If, if you get hit by a giant with a tree, that's going to knock you around. Even if you don't take damage, it's going to knock you about. You're going to have to make maintain concentration. Uh, and this one here, remove concentration when the effect is removed. So if we 
manually remove or some other way we remove the true strike spell does he continue concentrating on a spell that no longer is active so that's what this is about never means no he'll carry on concentrating on something that's no longer active well that's stupid of him uh, check for effects so yeah if the effect disappears the concentration should be removed but we can also do it with effects and templates so if you're concentrating on something like an entangle spell and that entangle spell was removed from the board for whatever reason will it because that's a template type spell will it then go well hang on a minute you don't need to be concentrating anymore so we drop the concentration well the character would do that wouldn't you you don't carry, carry on concentrating on something that's not actually happening <laughs> it's ridiculous so i'm going to put that on okay let's click save settings let's get rid of that go away go on and let's try that same scenario again so we're going to pop these two back into combat which is really easy because uh, we fast forward those dice rolls I haven't got to do all those clicks begin combat goblin is going first this time i'm going to skip his to go so we've got sorry Mum. so same again i'm going to cast that spell bearing in mind that i've made that small modification it's going to do exactly what we want Soriman now has advantage on his attacks against that goblin although if the character chooses or the player chooses to attack something else it will still give them the advantage not rules as written so as the dm you might want to be all over that or do some work on the true strike spell to link those two people together so it will only apply if the goblin has the true strike effect on them that's totally doable way out the scope of this video okay so we've got what we want we're concentrating on a spell uh, and if we look at the effects here it does say that this should be one round only so in theory it should time out by itself okay let's go the goblins go um i'll tell you what we're going to do let's let's check that concentration thing we're going to skip the goblins go and now it's sorryman's go again can you see that that timer has just disappeared? It hasn't automatically ended his concentration. Um, what we need to be able to do that, there is a module that we used to use, uh, or used in the last se series of videos when we're looking at, called Times Up. And Times Up will automatically end that. We will look at that another time, okay? But I just wanted to point out that yes, that is a, in inverted commas, problem, that we have a solution for and we will be looking at it right so anyway go back to the goblin so goblin is going to make his attacks and again i'm going to wail on sorryman until we actually manage to hit him so sim oh there we go first time bosh okay so what happened here we didn't get advantage on the attack which is correct which is what we want and the goblin did seven points of damage then the second card down it has flagged, gone, hang on a minute, Sorryman's taken damage, he needs to make a constitution check, it's a DC 10, I know it's quite small over there, I'll try to remember to zoom in in the edit, uh, but Sorryman rolled a 20 in total, so he got 15 plus 2 plus 3, he made that saving throw, and it just summarises that in that bottom card, so he is still concentrating, so even though the goblin hit him, he took damage, he's still concentrating on it. There is a slight issue with my uh, with Simon keep disappearing. Don't worry about it. Okay, let's see if we can get him to fail that save. Uh, we've got to hit him first. Come on, little gobbo. <laughs> Hooray! Okay, so again, we have hit him. We've done damage. Sorryman has made his saving throw. Unfortunately, Sorryman does have a particularly high, con well, fairly high concentration. So it's easier for him to resist these. Let's clear that and go again and see if we can get Sorryman to actually fail. Because we need to prove that this does work. He's made his saving throw again. He's made his saving throw again. He's made his saving throw again. He's going to die at this rate, isn't he? Whee! There we go. Right. <laughs> it worked. So we're looking at this card here where we've got the scimitar attack. Uh, we made our attack roll. We actually got a natural 20, which is great. Um, so we did the damage, absolutely. Uh, we did nine points of damage and that was applied to Sorryman. You can see his health bar just over this has gone right the way down. Concentration from Sorryman. He needed a DC 10. He got a TOF 7. So he rolled a 2. Uh, and then it says constitution saving throw 
and it shows us in red that it was a fail because he got a seven and his concentration has disappeared and because his concentration was broken it has taken away the um, the spell effect as well which was in this case true strike so that is the concentration tab it's not the full picture of spell casting because we haven't got the times up part of it but the concentration works we cast a spell that needs concentration the core system applies that concentration but the core system doesn't take it away again midi qol does so it will take it away uh, or rather it will demand that we make our concentration saving throw and if we fail it it will take away that concentration so it's just another little step you don't have to worry about again one thing to remember is there is a difference between what the the, the dm's fast forwarding dice rolls and the player fast forwarding dice rolls i'm in as the dm and even though I'm using a player character, I'm controlling it as the DM. So it's using my rules and fast forwarding all of these. At the moment, we haven't touched the player settings. So if the player was doing this, it would not have auto rolled that saving throw. It would have asked them to do it. It would have said, oh, you need to make a saving throw. Okay, because we haven't set that. Let's have a quick look at those settings. Uh, under, under player here. We haven't got auto attacks on. We haven't got any of those on at all. Um, and was it in the... Uh, we have got this in for concentration. So it's not going to auto roll their dice for them. Yeah, sorry. It's not going to auto roll their dice for them. But it is going to check for concentration regardless of the actor. Uh, which is great because that's what we want. Okay. Um, beautiful. So I hope that one's been useful just to show you that's another thing that MIDI QOL will do for us. And now I've got that set up. I've got my fast forwarding rolls. I've got my saving throws. I've got concentration set up. I don't need to touch MIDI QOL settings for those again unless I choose to change it. So um, I would always recommend once you've got your, your settings and you think they're OK, make sure you log in as a player and check their experience. So when I did this originally, there's a video from, oh, it's a few months ago now, um, from Stormwreck Isle, and we did a quick play test. And one of the uh, one of the bits of feedback from the players was they were getting lots and lots of spam here. And they said, well, oh, blimey, there's quite a lot of cards coming up. Because I had left some of those settings on, where I'm saying, test, give me all of the information because I was testing it and then I didn't go back and go hang on a minute I need to turn some of those off we know it works we don't need to see all of those cards so just bear that in mind um, always 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 don't just click the buttons and go yep that will work you know I'll watch Clay Golem do it this is what he selected so it works check it yourself just test it make sure it and some things might be a little bit quirky and that's okay as long as you're aware of it's a bit quirky and then you can just do it the the normal way in inverted commas um, to rectify that if necessary, such as manually enter ending the concentration if you find there's an issue somewhere with something. But as we continue through the series, as I said earlier, we will look at how we can modify items and spells and things like that to make sure that they do work correctly and smoothly with MIDI QOL because MIDI's driving the automation but the items have to be set correctly to do that. And when we talk about items, every one of these is an item, even if it's a spell. Every one of these is an item. You know, so rage is an item. It just happens to be a barbarian feature item. Um, so that's all an item. These are items. This dagger is an item. It happens to be a weapon item. Okay, so when we use that term item, it's referring to any of these sorts of things. So we might need to update those. And we looked, I've still got Lightbringer on here that we looked at in a previous video of automating that to a certain extent. All right, so I hope that's been useful. Going to stop gabbling on. I know I do overrun. Uh, thank you for watching. Do appreciate it. Leave a like, leave a comment if you've got any, um, any issues with this, anything you don't understand. I'm trying to pitch this at people 
who are very new to Foundry or haven't done automation before. So um, if you have done automation and you know what this is all about, you probably aren't watching this. And if you are, apologies if you feel patronized, but you're not my audience for this one. <laughs> for those people who kind of go, what? How do I start? This is how you start. Take care, everybody. I will see you in the next one.